Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the structure of one transistor DRAM and extend our understanding to the basic write and read operation in this dynamic random access memory. Okay, let's quickly get started. We start with the structure of our DRAM, which is very, very simple compared to our SRAM. It's nothing but comprises of one pass transistor, which is nothing but our NMOS transistor. And it will have one of its terminals called connected to bit line. Some books or some authors want to call it data line as well. And the other terminal would be connected to a capacitor because it's for one particular cell out of a grid which can have multiple rows and multiple columns so this is for one particular DRAM in this cell that's the reason we call it C cell and this is going to be my word line this is nothing but a one transistor DRAM circuit it looks quite small compared to what we had studied for SRAM where we had two pass transistors connected to a bit and bit bar line which in turn were connected to inverters if you remember we have drawn this at the transistor level and we have analyzed this as well where this two were nothing but word lines and this was bit and this was bit bar so compared to six transistors SRAM this looks quite compact and hence the size of a DRAM is quite smaller compared to an SRAM so the density is quite high density means more number of similar cells on the mentioned area so here because of six transistors it will be less denser compared to a DRAM however if you look at it properly if you look at the circuit of one transistor DRAM properly you see that we have a capacitor and the working principle which we'll slowly get into as we move ahead in this clip is going to be the charge stored across this capacitor now we know that capacitors to be fabricated on an integrated circuit occupies a lot of area so this takes a lot of area so though it's being a one transistor DRAM because of the capacitor it might end up taking a lot of area so these days what we do is in order to fabricate such capacitors which are connected as C cell to a DRAM what we do is we used a trench capacitor where a shape like that of a trench is created in the silicon or on the semiconductor it is filled with thin oxide which is nothing but acting as a dielectric so it will be filled with thin oxide sometimes you also fill it with other dielectric one other common example of dielectric is nothing but oxide nitride oxide dielectric right now just presume it to be thin oxide and then you fill this with polysilicon so what's going to happen is in very simple words the shape of a trench is created in a semiconductor so this side of the trench is your semiconductor or your silicon in between there is a dielectric and again you are putting polysilicon which is nothing but silicon again so this acts like a capacitor now this capacitor though you might seem that it might take a lot of area the surface area of this capacitor is very very less and more importantly these days the way they fabricate it is in a one transistor DRAM they fabricate the capacitor on top of which they put this transistor which is very very small so the area is optimized so this is one thing which everyone needs to understand that one tweet transistor or one transistor DRAM though being small in size the challenge is the fabrication of its capacitor which these days is fabricated using trench capacitors so we saw the size, we saw the density of our DRAM. The speed of our DRAM, DRAM is nothing but dynamic RAM, is much less compared to our SRAM because it involves a lot of peripheral circuitry which we will see as we move ahead. And the designing of DRAM is also one of the most challenging aspects because there are so many sequencing phenomena which will take place which we will see as we move ahead in this clip so the speed will be much less compared to SRAM and that's the very reason why SRAMs are used as cache memories and not DRAMs because they are very very slow though the area occupied by DRAM is less. Now the last point is why do we call it a dynamic RAM? Here if we see that in this DRAM the memory value is nothing but 
the charge stored on the capacitor. Suppose this capacitor has a value 1 which is stored on it or its charge to VDD will say that it has a value 1, logic value 1 stored in it. And if it is discharged to ground will say that it has a value 0 stored in its location. Now the dynamic nature means when the charge is stored across a capacitor at any point of time if this pass transistor which is acting as a switch is turned off we have already seen in the previous clips that there are problems called as charge leakage due to different leakage currents which are present which will tend to lose the value of this charge and eventually we might lose the correct value. So the dynamic name of this RAM is because it can hold its value but when the switch turns off due to charge leakage it might lose its value and hence we need to have a refresh mechanism in order to hold our correct value which was not to be the case in SRAM because in SRAM there were back to back inverters connected in a feedback loop which will always ensure that our value is never lost. That's the reason it was static or it could hold to that value in dynamic RAM due to charge decay the value is lost. So these are some of the basics which we need to understand with DRAM compared to SRAM. Moving ahead let's understand the basic writing principle in DRAM. It's very simple because we know that it's nothing but a pass transistor or an excess transistor with this being called the word line this is nothing but my bit line or my data line and this is nothing but my capacitor which will save the charge or which will store the charge to be more precise the writing operation is very very simple make your word line high when your word line is high whatever data let's call this as data line also anything you can call and this we will call it as C cell, this node we will call it as X and voltage across this we will call it as V cell. So we know that when word line goes high because it's a pass transistor whatever is present on the data line will be passed to X. So suppose if my data line was 1 or VDD my X would be 1, if my data line would be 0 when my word line is high a 0 would be written so here you can write either a 1 on this capacitor or a 0 these are logic values however we know that an NMOS when used as a pass transistor cannot pass a perfect value 1 it can pass a logic value 1 but it cannot pass a perfect value 1 at the output or a perfect VDD at the output the max it can pass is nothing but VDD minus VTN with a threshold voltage drop. This we have already seen in the pass transistor drawback. In order to ensure that it passes a perfect VDD, what we need to do is a very simple change. We just need to make our word line VDD plus VTP or VDD plus VTN because we are talking about NMOS. So what's going to happen is rather than making it VDD, see it was like this in pass transistor. If this was VDD and this is what is nothing but our gate terminal and this is source, we said that VGS should be greater than or equal to threshold voltage. So VG minus threshold voltage was equal to V source. So this was nothing but VS equal to VDD minus VT because my gate voltage was VDD. In this case what I am going to do is I am going to make my gate voltage only nothing but VDD plus VTN. So this is VS equal to VDD plus VTN minus VTN because it's an NMOS. So this will get cancelled off. And I'll get a perfect VDD at my node X or a perfect value high stored across my capacitor. This is how a write operation takes place. Now a question might arise if I've already written into this capacitor a value 1 and after that my word line goes to 0. What will happen? So the circuit is the same. My word line has gone to 0 so the transistor is off. This is my bit line and this is my capacitor. We have already seen this in the previous clip that now because of the leakage currents we have seen this a concept called as charge leakage what's going to happen and the leakage currents can be of different different types right from ranging from PN junction diode reverse leakage to leakage due to sub threshold conduction we have seen that also or due to the material etc. We have seen all this in the clip on charge leakage in C square MOS logic circuit due to which we have also seen that 
what happens due to charge leakage is my suppose if i have to draw a curve this is my time t and this is my voltage so initial voltage was vdd let's say with time we have already seen this in the charge leakage clip which is nothing but my voltage will keep on dropping and we saw that it's not a linear decay for understanding it was linear but as we went ahead in that same clip we also saw that it's not technically a linear decay the value will keep on going down till a point of time is reached which is nothing but whole time where the value of your voltage say is vx so anything about this will be still interpreted as a correct value but once it crosses the whole time of the circuit a uh, incorrect value would be interpreted and hence the value which was written on the DRAM cell is lost and that's the very reason we need to have a refresh mechanism so at that point of time in that clip we had seen that the whole time assuming the leakage currents as high as 1 nano ampere we have seen this all in that clip change in voltage equal to 1 volt and capacitor value is equal to 50 femtofarad we have found the whole time to be equal to 0.5 microsecond so it can hold the value till this point of time till 0.5 microseconds after which it will lose its value so we need to have a refresh mechanism which says that there has to be a refresh cycle or a refresh happening in our DRAM circuit after every interval of time and this also we have seen in one of the clips that this frequency of refresh is approximately equal to 1 by twice th where th is nothing but my whole time we have also seen this so technically what we are trying to understand here in the basic write operation in DRAM is it's very straightforward to write into a DRAM when a logic one is applied to its word line however when word line goes low and if my capacitor was initially charged to one due to leakage currents my capacitor will lose its value and it will be able to hold its value till hold time which is nothing but th and after which a refresh has to happen otherwise the value is lost as we go ahead in this clip we will see the summary of refresh mechanism how refresh takes place for the timing remember that four steps will happen select a particular cell in a column or a row basically if this is my DRAM 4 cross 4 select a particular cell where you want the refresh to happen refresh always happens by reading that data in that cell I will explain that to you as we go ahead read the data bits in that cell once you have read the data bits you have to ensure that the value of that data bits is restored again we will understand this when we go into the read operations in details and finally you have to rewrite again this will happen in the read operation only so this all will be understood very well in details when we undergo a detailed study of our read operation so once the rewrite is done you can go ahead and do this for other cells as well so this is the basic summary right now just remember that you need to select a particular cell read it data bit restore its value and rewrite into that cell and go back and do this again and again this is a very simple process in terms of understanding technically it's very very difficult that's the reason DRAMs are complex circuits so let's go ahead and see the basic read operation in a DRAM this is again a very interesting phenomena let's say this is nothing but my DRAM again where this is my bit line or my data line and this is my C cell capacitor and this is my word line so let's presume that there was a one written here which was nothing but a VDD initially and we want to read this one so what's going to happen is for the read operation you have to make your bit line or your data line to be VDD by 2 so bit or data line is made VDD by 2 make your word line high so when your word line goes logic high that means this is on circuit and it's very simple to understand that there is nothing but charge sharing where one terminal has VDD by 2 and the other terminal is at VDD so again I am using this analogy there are two buckets of water one with higher value of water another one with the lower value and if they are connected through a pipe water will flow from the higher one to the lower one till both of them achieve the same value correct so this is the same concept of charge sharing which we have again seen which tells us that mind you there is a capacitor here and very very important to understand here is there is a capacitor here as well which is nothing but c bit capacitance 
Now let's understand what's going to happen. Technically, because of charge sharing, we'll come back to understand which value is greater, C bit is greater or C cell is greater and what's going to happen due to that, which value of capacitance is great and how it's going to affect the operation of my circuit. Right now, charge sharing is happening, which will lead this node, which I'll call it as node X. So this point will increase or bit line or data line will go to a higher value, whereas node X will go to a lower value because they both have to come at the same equilibrium. So what you need to understand is VDT by two, which is present on bit line, if a one is stored on C cell will go up by some voltage value. Let's see what will happen if a zero is stored. So if a zero is stored, on the C cell, very similar, we will have the same understanding. So there is a zero here, again, capacitor. Here also there is a capacitor, mind you. And this is again the same steps. Make your bit or data line equal to VDD by two, make your word line high. So now this is VDD by two and this is zero, which means that this will go up and this will go down by some value in order to achieve equilibrium. So now your bit line will go to VDD by 2 minus delta V, some small voltage it will drop and this delta V voltage will be sensed by sense amplifier which will not only sense this difference in voltage but also amplify it and give us a perfect value of 1 and 0 and ensure that the read has happened which we'll see in the next clip. Before we go ahead let's quickly comment on C bit capacitor value of bit and capacitor value of cell. Technically, we know that this one transistor DRAM is never going to be alone. It will be always in an array. So this is one transistor DRAM, this is another one, this is the third one, and they're all in one column. So, and all of them have their capacitance which are present. So this C bit capacitance, they're all capacitance which are connected in parallel. So it's added is a huge value. So C bit is equal to the capacitor value here plus this, plus this, because they are all in parallel, so it needs to be added. So C bit is a huge value, whereas C cell has to be a small value because we are going to fabricate it and we want a less area for our DRAM. So this has to be a less value. But how less it can go up to? Because if it is a very, very small value, this delta V voltage swing is not going to happen. So we will see this part of delta voltage swing or delta V or voltage swing in the next clip and we'll also understand how read mechanism ensures that the refresh is also happening and the data is rewritten. Hope you have followed the basics in this clips. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much and take care.